Hello everyone, my name is Matthew Nauman, and the main subject of this video is ferroelectricity and ferroelectric materials. So what are ferroelectrics? Ferroelectrics are certain dielectric materials that collectively have spontaneous electric polarization. This means that the material can be electrically polarized or have an electric dipole moment without an external electric field, and the polarization can be switched. In ferroelectric materials, their molecules each carry electric dipole moments which collectively and spontaneously align to form a polarized material. Very similar to this is the concept of ferromagnetism and ferromagnets, which we commonly just call magnets. Just like how a bar magnet has a magnetic field, a ferroelectric material has an electric dipole moment where one end is positively charged and the other is negatively charged. A good example of a material whose molecules have dipole moments but is not ferroelectric is water. In a water molecule, since the oxygen atom is slightly negative and the hydrogen atoms are slightly positive, this produces a net molecular dipole moment. However, the molecular dipole moments of every molecule in water don't spontaneously align, so water is not polarized. A prototypical material whose molecular dipole moments do align and is ferroelectric is lead titanate. Lead titanate has a non-centrosymmetric crystal structure. This is because its ferroelectric properties arise from the displacement of the titanium atom from its oxygen octahedron center, as can be seen in figure A. The off-center titanium atom is positively charged, which results in a net dipole moment for the crystal cell oriented downward. Thanks to lead titanate's crystal structure, the crystal cell's dipoles are oriented in the same direction, which makes lead titanate ferroelectric. The direction of charge can also be switched if an electric field is applied. If a field is applied in the direction of P, the titanium atom would be attracted upward to point A, resulting in a reverse dipole moment. This process carries up to the larger scales of the material, so through this method the polarization of the entire material can be switched. Above lead titanate's ferroelectric transition temperature T, the crystal structure is deformed and the titanium atom becomes placed in the center of the cell. The charges of all the atoms then cancel out and there's no longer a dipole moment or net polarization of the material, although it can be polarized if an electric field is applied. This behavior demonstrates the paraelectric property. There are a few key differences between ferroelectricity and paraelectricity. In figure A, when an electric field is applied to a ferroelectric material, it becomes polarized and the crystal structure of the material is permanently deformed, even after the field returns to zero leaving a remnant polarization. This cycle will be talked about more later. On the other hand, in figure B, paraelectric materials can also be electrically polarized by applying an electric field. However, when the field is removed, the polarization of the material decreases back to zero. Returning to the diagram below, we see that above the transition temperature T, the titanium atom is in the center of the cell, no longer producing a net dipole moment. It can be moved, by an electric field, but once the field is gone, it will return to its original position. This is the general reason why paraelectric materials have no remnant polarization. Real-life ferroelectric materials are more often than not inhomogeneous. These small areas with homogeneous oriented spontaneous polarization are called domains. These domains are separated by domain walls. Domains in ferroelectrics range in size from only a few nanometers across to a micron. Even though each domain has its own net spontaneous polarization, the polarization of all the domains may cancel out and the material as a whole will not have a net ferroelectric polarization, as shown on the left. Here we can see a material with domains oriented in completely different directions. The ferroelectric domains can be aligned by applying an external electric field. On the right, all of the domains are aligned in the same direction, demonstrating a net polarization for the material. Next, let's look at ferroelectric behaviors. Here, the x-axis is the applied electric field, and the y-axis is the polarization of a sample ferroelectric material. We call this diagram the PE loop. A pristine ferroelectric material has misaligned domains and therefore no net polarization, as can be seen at the center of the diagram. The arrows and the squares indicate direction of the net polarization in each domain. As an electric field is applied, the domains within the material will begin to align in the opposite direction of the applied field. For example, if an electric field is oriented with positive upward, 
the negative ends of the domains will be attracted and the positive ends repelled, resulting in the domains aligning downward. Eventually, the material will consist of a single domain and so cannot be polarized any further, even if the electric field is strengthened. This is known as saturation polarization. As the electric field is removed, some of the domains may misalign. However, the material will remain polarized. The remaining polarization is called the remnant polarization, and the amount it decreased by is the non-remnant polarization. As a negative electric field is applied, the polarization will decrease, and the total polarization will go back to zero. At this moment, the applied electric field is called the coercive field. Continuing to strengthen the negative electric field, the domains will be aligned again, but in the opposite direction. This process can be repeated. The polarization displays a hysteresis with the external electric field, so this is called the hysteresis loop. Now, I would like to talk about a property of all ferroelectric materials, known as the piezoelectric property. This is the property of certain materials to generate electrical energy when mechanical stress is applied, and deform when an electrical field is applied. When a field is applied, the polarization is switched, so the atomic arrangement is also changed, which results in a small change in the shape of the material. In other words, the electrical and mechanical properties of ferroelectric materials are coupled, which results in this effect. Below is one simple equation describing the piezoelectric effect in ferroelectrics. Here we see a relationship between an applied electric field, mechanical strain on the material, and the charge density in polarization. It clearly shows the link between mechanical stress and the electrical properties of the material. In other words, a ferroelectric material can convert a small amount of stress to an electrical signal and vice versa, with atomic precision. This leads to the application of ferroelectrics to sensors and actuators. The unique properties of ferroelectrics allow them to have many different applications. Thanks to the hysteresis phenomenon, ferroelectric materials can be used to produce tunable capacitors where the polarization does not decay back to zero. By applying the piezoelectric effect, as well as other properties, they can also be used in several types of detectors, such as piezoelectric force sensors, microactuators, and single-point infrared sensors. Ferroelectrics are also used in thermal infrared switches. And finally, they are applied in computer memory in DRAM capacitors, or dynamic random access memory capacitors, and non-volatile mem RAM memory cells. The future of ferroelectrics is very bright. We can only imagine what new technologies may come from ferroelectrics in coming years. I hope this video has given you a good idea of what ferroelectrics are all about. Thanks for watching.